Okay, everybody. So here we are in D5. We're using D5 version 2.4, I think 0.1. And what we have is a very simple blender scene set up. Now I'm using some assets from D5 and also some assets from iMesh, which I strongly suggest you check out if you're a blender user. Now, you can see we've got a couple of things. We've got a very large window on the left, which is putting a lot of light into our scene. And we've also got a few of these little inset lights in the ceiling. But if you want to go and start adding some artificial lights into your scene, you're probably just going to hit two on the keyboard and I'm going to place just a few of these spotlights because this is how a lot of people are going to light up their scene. So we'll place one, two, three and four of these little spotlights just pointing downwards. And now the issue is really just comes down to visualization, seeing exactly what light is being contributed by your spotlights and what light is coming from elsewhere. And so the first tip that I have on this of the two is relatively straightforward. Go to environment, we are, I'm sorry, go to effect and we are going to turn off auto exposure completely. Now this is standard practice for D5 when you come to render your scene, just always turn off the auto exposure and set it manually. But that's not what we wanna do. We actually also wanna to go to the environment and I'm currently lighting my scene with the geo and sky. And to properly visualize, here's a simple method. Grab this and crank it to completely nighttime. Now, you can see that if I select any of the materials, potentially that I have an emissive material and turn them on, we wanna make sure that the only light in the scene is now coming from our four spotlights. Okay, that looks good. I can see what's being lit up. Now, the next thing that you might wanna do is go over here to the left, click on light. You can see I've got my four spotlights here. Hold down shift one, two, three, four, or click on the bottom and you can select all of them. And this has all four of them selected. This only works, I believe, if you have four of the, you know, the same light types, you know, it can be two, three, four, five, six, it doesn't really matter, but they do have to be the same light type to select all of them and to adjust them on the right. And so what we're gonna do here is just change the color. It's a little hard to visualize the effect of an all white or maybe a slightly Kelvin warm white. So what we'll do is just change the color and I'm gonna crank it to complete red. All right, we'll let it sit for a second to effectively update. And now you have a much better sort of way of seeing and interpreting the effect that your lights are having. With this being done, it's much easier for me to go in and adjust, for example, the cone angle and to see exactly where the individual fall off per light is. Once you get this done, you can also tweak the intensity and you could tweak the attenuation if you needed the light to go further, or if you want the light to maybe stop before it hits the ground plane or the floor. There we go. All right, once that's done, you have a much better idea of what light is being contributed by the artificial lights and then what light is coming in from the outside. I can also change my environment back to just the sunlight and we'll let D5 update here in a second. And again, you'll see now a good idea, a good visual representation of what light is coming in from the exterior and what light is actually coming in from your artificial lights. Okay, the second tip I wanna talk about, and this is probably gonna to apply to you if you have a much more complicated scene than this. Perhaps you've got a scene with a wide variety of different light sources. And again, you're not entirely sure what effect they're having. I am going to drop this back to again, pitch black. And I'm going to go to display on the top right. And you can see we've got different modes here, the lit or just a standard viewport. We've got the real time, which will only really show changes if there's something being animated or moving. We also have the wireframe, which is only really useful for positioning your lights or positioning other objects. And then finally, this one here, the clay model. Now, the joy of working with this is I'm gonna put my light back to sort of default again. And I'm gonna select all of these lights over here on the left. And I'm gonna change these back to just kind of a nice warm color. And there you go. We can actually see now the effect that these lights are having. I can see almost in real time 
where the light fall off is coming in from. I can see it from the left coming down onto the floor and I can see the overall contribution of the actual lights. And you can mix and match these techniques. I will generally put my scenes to the clay, add my lights, I will then turn them to red and then I'll go in and I will tweak effectively the strength of all of these lights. Now just be mindful, sometimes D5 can be a little bit slow to respond to this, but you can clearly see the effect it's having. If you're still struggling to see the effect that lights are having, go back to the exposure tab. You can turn on the auto exposure as you're doing this process, and that will give you a much clearer indication of really where lights are going, what they're hitting, what they're affecting, and where the limitations of your lighting setup is. Okay, with that being said, that should help you visualize your lights in the D5 scene, see the effect they're having, and hopefully get a much better lighting setup in your D5 renders. And to my mind, one of the benefits of this technique is that it prevents you from really throwing lights everywhere in an attempt to fix what you might perceive or interpret as bad lighting. This is especially true, I find, for beginners. When they find their scenes are a little too dark, the first thing they tend to do is just add more artificial lights. But if you adopt this approach, there's a good chance that you'll just see where your lights are working, where they're not working, and you can go ahead and just add maybe one or two more lights to fix problem areas. All right. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found the content useful or interesting, please think about liking, uh, subscribing, or in fact, just leaving a comment. It really is nice um, to hear from people and to get feedback from people. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.